Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to the fourth in a series of Californians Together English Learners Zoom Communities of Practice. So today we put the spotlight on Spanish, English, dual language learning and teaching K-5. And we know that being a dual language educator is tough enough when we have the students face to face. Distance learning has added tremendous challenges from language allocation, lack of resources and apps in the target language, providing opportunities for student collaboration, and opportunities to produce and practice language, as well as the lack of access to devices and the internet. So this is your opportunity to connect with other dual language educators and share promising practices, as well as to surface the challenges you are facing as you address distance learning for our emergent bilingual students. We are listening and plan to continue our advocacy efforts during this crisis and also possibly more important when our students return to school. Today, you will hear voices from the field. Next slide, please. So in terms of the logistics, everyone will be muted during the panel sharing. Uh, following the presentation, you will join a breakout room to share specifically dual language practices, resources, and ask questions of your colleagues. We will return as a whole group to share. And again, the chat room will be monitored for questions and comments. Next slide. So again, we're asking you to please participate actively in the breakout room, submit comments in the chat box. And if you haven't yet, please complete the survey we sent earlier after attending the session. So go back a slide, please. So our, today our presenters include a team from Azusa Unified School District. And so with us today, uh, we have Norma Camacho, Director of English Learner Services and Categorical Programs. I also have to say, of course, that Azusa is my hometown, so I'm cheering for them. Norma is also a member of the English Learner Leadership and Legacy Institute, also known as ELLI. She is joined by Liz Rondero, who's a first grade dual language teacher and Julie McGo, elementary math teacher on special assignment. Their presentation will address reaching English learners in dual immersion classes. They will be followed by the first grade team from Montgomery Elementary in the Davis Joint Unified School District, a Sobrato Early Academic Language District. We have with us Sydney Santana, Lucia Diaz, and Liliana Valdez. And they will be sharing their presentation titled Joyful Dual Language Instruction Thematic Units in Distance Learning. Following the district presentations, we have Dr. Kathy Contreras, a bilingual teacher educator teaching at California State University Channel Islands in the School of Education and the Chicano Studies Department. Kathy is also a bilingual children's book author, and she curates the Chispa Dual Language Education, which compiles online resources, news, and inspiration for dual language educators and families through the Scoop It platform. So at this time, I'm turning it over to the Azusa Unified School District team. So Norma. Is she muted? We can't hear Norma. She has to be unmuted. There you go, Norma. Hello. Oh. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. It is such a pleasure to be here with all of you. You, I'm Norma Camacho. I am the director of English Learner Services and Categorical Programs for the Azusa Unified School District. Our district approach to teaching and learning of English learners is grounded in the English Learner Roadmap policy, mm -hmm. and it's built on the California standards and frameworks, as well as the guiding principles for dual language education, supported by the universal designs for learning. 
and shifting from our brick and mortar setting to distance learning for our English learners and dual immersion, our focus was to ensure that we would continue to build on our English learner student assets, their language, their experiences, respond to student and family needs, provide the students meaningful access and high quality instruction, and maintain the same focus on bilingualism, biliteracy, and multiculturalism. It was also important to shift classroom routines from the brick and mortar setting to distance learning by retaining instructional techniques, um, such as cooperative learning and flexible grouping and lessons in order to continue pushing our students to higher levels of language use and cognition. We also considered how to provide English learner students with meaningful opportunities to, uh, for using both languages actively and academic and social settings in order to ensure oral and written uh, language development and continued growth of academic vocabulary. Distance learning had to continue to allow our students opportunities to be both language models and language learners when they are interacting with their peers in this new virtual setting. In collaboration with our teachers on special assignment, who helped to develop our base plan for distance learning, we ensured that the dual immersion distance learning plan provided multiple ways for our students and families to act access materials, both digital and print, and that the plan allowed for time to differentiate instruction and front load content, and also to ensure that it allowed space for our students to demonstrate their learning and understanding and different modalities. Today, you'll be hearing from our elementary math teacher on special assignment, Julie McGow, who also spent many years as a dual immersion teacher, and from Liz Rondero, who is one of our dual immersion teachers, and she is proudly also part of the Loyola Marymount Bilingual Teacher Professional Development Program grant. So I will pass it over to Julie. Next All right, slide. Are we ready for our next slide? So as a TOSA, I had the opportunity to be part of um, the district planning, if we can back up just a little bit for distance learning. Um, as we thought about this, there were some key values that we really wanted to make sure that we provided equity and access for all of our learners. We all sat and thought about students that we know in the district what challenges they might have in accessing content and support through distance learning. And specifically, we thought about our language learners and the unique challenges that they might face. We considered the challenges that were presented by lack of access to technology, whether it's not having the technology or not having internet or not knowing how to use their technology. For this reason, our de district developed what we refer to as the base plan. So for elementary, the base plan means that there are two key concepts being um, introduced for language arts and two key concepts being introduced for mathematics each week. The materials to support this plan are available as paper pencil materials if that's preferred by families or they can be accessed digitally and students have been able to check out devices to help with that. This base plan has the advantage of providing continuity of content. So all of our students from PK to five are being provided with the same lessons so that when we return, we'll be able to address any learning gaps um, and those gaps would be common to all of the students rather than different from classroom to classroom. The second thing that we thought about in ensuring equity and access were the language assets in the homes of our students. Parents and caregivers now need to be thought about as our co-teachers, so it's vitally important that the materials that we have be available in both English and in Spanish. For our English learners in dual immersion, they have a leg up because their core instruction is in Spanish. Um, but for many of our students who are acquiring Spanish as a second language, their parents and caregivers may not have been able to provide support if all of the materials were in Spanish. So we were able to reach out to our curriculum providers um, to ensure digital access and accounts for all the students in the district, both in English and in Spanish. The third thing that we considered in terms of equity and access was time constraints of a parent who maybe is a first responder and is working full time, or a student who's responsible for caring for siblings throughout the day, or maybe who has a home that is not um, really conducive to studying. For this reason, we really worked hard with teachers to keep expectations reasonable. We also chose to provide, um, for example, the same science lesson and the same social studies lesson for all the students from kindergarten to fifth grade so that siblings could do that work together and families wouldn't have a separate lesson for each child in their family. 
we're ready for the, for the transition. In terms of math specifically, some of our teachers are utilizing the differentiated lessons provided by the publisher to do pre-meetings with language learners prior to their math lessons. We are providing video content um, that students can access to front load concepts as well as video models. The materials are available, as we said, in English and in Spanish, and we've made a big emphasis on playing math games as a family um, to develop fluency. We chose games that can be done with things that students already have in their homes. Um, and I have to say, it's been one of the most powerful collaborations we've ever had with families. If you take a look here at our next slide, you can see this is a sample of what um, we are able to see. Um, one more. One more transition. This is a sample of what parents see when they log into our district website. There we go. And they're able to see both of the materials in English and in Spanish. In order to do this, we knew that teachers were going to need a lot of support. So before we launched, we had what we called a pre-launch phase. And the week before distance learning started, we um, were providing systematic training and support. We as teachers on special assignment um, work together to anticipate the needs that teachers would have to be ready to, to launch distance learning. And they had an entire week of training before the students started. Once that distance learning started, we entered what we think about as phase two, which is included twice a day Google Hangouts where teachers can come and meet with the TOSAs for life support. We're now in phase three um, and teachers have gotten their feet wet. Now some of the teachers that were hesitant to attend classes at first are anxious and want to know what can I do next and can you help me with my Google Classroom? And, and so we actually sent out a survey and asked them what they would like to have offered and we've offered another round of professional learning um, in addition to continued life support. We also um, have housed all of these materials in one place on a Google Drive, which has been very helpful because everyone can find them, except that a few of our teachers have found that the Google Drive can be a little overwhelming. Um, we have their videos, we have samples of how to get teachers on the technology as well as how to get parents on the technology. And because some of them have a little trouble navigating that drive, we have one document, which we call our Rocket Doc, um, that has links to every single one of those technology helps so that teachers can easily access the materials that are there. We also send out regular emails. Um, and each of these emails has tables with all of the materials in them that have clickable links so that teachers are easily able to find the materials that they need to be ready to teach the next week. So Liz Rondero is going to share with us what this looks like with her students in a dual immersion first grade class. Next slide. Good afternoon. I'm very excited for this opportunity to be able to share my goals to support distance learning for my students. I'm a first grade dual immersion teacher. Our model is 90-10 and the target language is Spanish. Goal number one, connecting with one another. This is very important for the social and emotional well-being of our students. It's a time where students connect with each other, with their teacher, and I connect with families. Maintaining and extending learning. Our base plan is what I consider the blueprint, a place to start. Students are very familiar with the resources in the plan. Mirroring routines already established in the classroom. How can I mirror the instructional and language routines that were already established in the classroom? What might that look like in a distance learning setting? School closures happened as we were beginning the third trimester. However, a strong foundation had been laid for students. Every grade level has a learning block. My learning blocks with students are on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Students receive two invitations for a Google meeting. The first meeting is a whole group meeting for oral language practice, such as responding to a prompt, reciting a poem, a chant, or a read aloud. And then we proceed to math, where I preview, review the lessons presented in the base plan. The second meeting is a small group meeting for Spanish language and arts and or ELD, helping parents and students maneuver through the technology. This has been a difficult task for everyone, students, parents, and teachers alike. I continue to model, model, model for my students, and I provide Google meetings for my parents to help them facilitate this new way of learning. Now I'd like to expand more about mirroring routines. What does that look like in a distance learning setting? And what are the digital resources that are available in order for students to, continuing, to continue developing the four domains of language? These skills are reciprocal, 
reading, writing, listening, and speaking are embedded in the following routine. Small group instruction. This is my guided reading time, where students are reading differentiated text at their instructional level with me. Students are able to listen, read the text, and then take a quiz. The resources I currently use are Kids A to Z, Epic, which are free resources educators may utilize during remote learning. Next. Reading independently, reading for pleasure. At our school, we have been afforded Renaissance Place, which recently launched My On, an online library, and students may also use Epic. These sites have a variety of texts in both English and in Spanish for students to choose from. Students are able to take a quiz if they choose to an accelerated reader, which is a component available through Renaissance Place. Next. Listening. YouTube Kids and Epic are sites where students are able to listen to stories or view vid videos related to the content. After listening, we can have a discussion about story elements, retelling a story, or identifying key details from a text. Writer's Workshop. Students are com completing weekly reading assignments, well, I'm sorry, writing assignments, where they're responding to the text included in the base plan and are also currently writing informative pieces. All these assignments and important links to these digital resources are located in my Google Classroom. Students are able to share and turn in their assignments. Setting up a Google Classroom has been very helpful for students and parents to maneuver through the technology. Throughout these routines, I serve as a mediator for my students, where I provide many opportunities to rehearse academic language, a time for students to think about how language works, its function, meaning, and use. Language, language, language is embedded in all we do. There has been a district focus on academic discourse. Therefore, students continue to build on the structures and protocols in the classroom as demonstrated in the following anchor charts. Next. So these are um, protocols and norms that we're using in our classroom, how to be a good listener. Um, so we continue to use these in our meetings. We use talk moves um, to support each other as we're having our conversation. You will see my students using these hand movements during our Zoom meetings when we like to uh, either add an idea, have a new idea, disagree and agree. And you could see that handsome, uh, the language frames are provided for them. Next slide. Next. Meeting the needs of EL students is still a focus embedded in our distance learning plan. Students are provided differentiated lessons to preview, review key concepts prior to or after whole class instruction. We offer designated ELD where my partner teacher works with my students and I work with hers as the English model teacher. During this time, we reinforce the lessons presented in the distance learning plan that focus on the ELD standards. I'd like to end by reiterating that how we teach remains at the heart of everything we do. Those effective instructional practices and strategies that we were using in the brick and mortar classroom can be extended in the distance learning setting like the talk moves and collaborative protocols I shared, highlighting cognates, the use of translanguaging, which allows students to tap into their rich language repertoires and their primary language, providing language frames when needed, constructing interactive charts while working with students and using visuals such as images or clip art. Next. Next slide, please. So these are just a few examples. Um, that students can access in our Google Classroom. You'll see, oops, can you go back please and slide? You briefly saw some of the examples there. Okay, there we go. So you can see this is one of, an example of one of the texts we use from Kids A to Z. Um, there under there, you'll see um, a little graphic organizer that um, I generate with students interactively as we're discussing the text. The next is a uh, math task that is part of our uh, base plan for math. So I just added some clip art there to help it, uh, to help students visualize what the question is asking. And this is another resource that it's a guide for students 
for their informative pieces. So many of these resources are located in my Google Classroom that students have access with uh, for, and um, it, it's, it's really helped bring everything together and, and the learning um, meaningful. So thank you. I think Norma is waiting to be unmuted. If you can go back a slide. I'll go back one slide. So as we navigate this road, we continue to reflect and revise and continue to just reflect on all of our practices to ensure the best for our students in this new setting. So even though the setting looks different, the learning continues. Thank you. Next slide. Again, thanks. So now, Montgomery Elementary is going to share their screen. Hola, buenas tardes. Hello and good evening. My name is Sydney Santana and I am humbled and honored to be here in this virtual space alongside of my grade level colleagues, Maestras Lucia Diaz and Liliana Valdez, along with our fabulous instructional coaches, Nora Brazil and Anna Vegan. Together, we are the first grade team at Marguerite Montgomery Elementary School in the Davis Joint Unified School District. Today, we'd like to share with you joyful dual language instruction, thematic units in distance learning. Should you have any questions or comments throughout our presentation, please feel free to enter them into the chat box and one of our team members will be happy to respond as we are able. In addition, I'd like to note that if, you, if you'd like to access any of the resources that are in our presentation, the icons, schedules, and video, videos are all embedded with direct links. Before I dive deep into what we as a team have been doing to navigate the unpredictable waters of what is now known as distance learning, I'd like to take a moment to provide some background on the school that we graciously call home. Located in Davis, Montgomery Elementary is a K-6 two-way bilingual immersion site at which we have a 90-10 language model set in place, meaning that in kindergarten and first grade, students receive 90% of their instruction in Spanish and 10% in English. And as they progress through the grades, the percentage, the percentage changes so that by the time students are in the fourth grade, they receive 50% of their instruction in both languages. It is important for us to note that Montgomery is unique in that our school's demographic is unlike the others in Davis. It is much like what is found in the state of California. Additionally, in recent years, our school began to adopt the SEAL model, a powerful English language learner focused approach that is deep rooted, deep rooted in research, which helps us teachers support and meet the needs of our demographic. Another thing that is unique to our site and that has set the foundation for our team to stick together and connected as maestras in this pandemic has been district supported weekly grade level collaboration time. During this time, we plan and constantly ref reflect upon our practice together with support of specialists and specific to this presentation, our SEAL trained ELD specialists who ensures, who ensures that their designated ELD plans connect to our thematic unit. Going into distance learning, we had no idea where to start or what to do. But let's be honest, some days we feel like we're starting all over again. But one thing we did know was that access and equity was going to be a big piece for our school's demographic, considering language and socioeconomic factors. We grappled, we still do. But for us, we decided we wanted paper and materials in each of our students' hands. So we create packets and mail packets to each of our students. 
packets contain a schedule that allows students and families to implement them as they are able and contain materials that provide students with the opportunity to engage with and reprocess information we present. On this schedule, you may notice things such as watch lesson video or listen to the story on Google Classroom. This means that links are available on our Google Classroom or sent to families via our Classroom communication apps if they are unable to access to Google Classroom. All materials are posted or sent home in both English and Spanish. As I mentioned earlier, the SEAL model that our site has adopted is deep-rooted in research around, base pra around best practices for English learners. Going into distance learning, we didn't know what it would look like, but we knew that at our core, we wanted to hold on to what we were familiar with in this unpredictable time and that our students' needs would be at the forefront. So with much trial and error, but with keeping our students' joy in mind, we sought to continue what SEAL taught us to be best practices for dual language learners, which are integrative thematic instruction. In this presentation, you'll see that we implemented a unit called Patterns in the Sky, Engagement, Oral Language, Vocabulary Development, Bridging School and Family, and Cross-Language Connections. To do this, we utilize a variety of strategies to help our students continue these practices, and we'd like to share these with you. The first strategy that we'd like to share with you is called Vocabulary in Context, also known as VIC. This strategy allows students to practice oral language and cross make connections as we use it to introduce vocabulary found in the context of our theme and to provide students with the opportunity to access language schema and make cross-language connections. In this video, you will see my colleague, Maya Sadiaz. Así que en el cielo, en un lugar específico, hay un grupo de estrellas, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, yo tengo un ejemplo aquí. Vamos a dibujar una constelación. Hay muchas y cada una tiene un nombre diferente. Esta So as you saw her, she was explaining what a constellation is in a contextual sentence while also connecting its meaning to a drawing. On the left side of this slide, you will see a student template that was included in our packet for students to use and process. Specifically, at the, at the bottom, you will see a section for language extension, which we utilize to help students with finding cognates, foundational skills such as letter sounds or word, word tenses. You saw my ideas using a video or is capturing a video on her cell phone and using a copy of the template, but this can also be shot with a document camera or a, a video screencastify app. Another strategy that we utilize is called draw and label. This strategy allows us to teach vocabulary and main thematic concepts. We use it to capture student engagement and provide them an opportunity to practice their oral language. In this video, you will hear me intentionally elicit student engagement to get them to say something with me. El sol tiene rayos. Dilo conmigo. Rayos del sol. My example was shot using the recording of my iPad screen, but can easily be done with a camera recording using paper. Here, you see a student example of a completed template that mimics the finished drawn label. This template allows students the opportunity to reprocess the information and was also sent home in our packets. Now I'd like to pass this presentation over to my dear, my dear colleague, Maestra Lucia Diaz. Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Ahora vamos a aprender sobre una nueva um, estrategia. This strategy is uh, called content-based chants. Content-based chants allow us to teach thematic content while incorporating the vocabulary the students are studying. 
The chance can be printed and sent home in paper packets, given that not every family has a printer at home. So we submit um, activities in paper and their mail every two weeks for all of our families. Equity is very important for us. The students then watch the chant video, practice it at home, even multiple times to learn each chant, then read it in their paper chant booklet that they got in the mail, and they find cognates or keywords that are related to our unit. And then at the end, they draw a picture related to each chant. And activities like funding cognates are also transfer lessons. We also practice these chants during the live class meetings. This is the best part. <laughs> we share the, these videos via Google Classroom and Clever. And if families can still access them, we can share the link via our classroom communication app like ClassDojo or Remind. Now we're gonna see a video. If Liliana, if you could start the video and I'm going to narrate what's happening in the video. So here you see three examples of how we do the chants. In the first example, the teacher adds total physical response with hand signals, and the students can practice these hand signals from home. The hand signals can come from the American Sign Language, or there are made up movements like rain, uh, created by each teacher. There are different ways to present the chants in the videos. Like in the first example, we saw a karaoke style using the Google Slides and recording using Screencastify. In the second example, we see Maestra Valdez is doing a close-up of her hands so students can see the hand signals better. Maestra Valdez is also using the same charm booklet that students have at home. In the last example, Maestra Santana is highlighting which word students need to find in their chant. And this is again the same packet that they have at home that they receive in the mail. These chants provide multiple learning points, cross language connections, oral practice, vocabulary development, foundational skills, and fluency practice. All at the same time, the students are engaged and having fun singing this tune from home. And sometimes when we meet during the live meetings, they tell us what is their favorite chant from each unit. Next, thank you. Um, now, the most challenging part has been staying connected with families during this distance learning. From the beginning of the school year, we had classroom communication apps like Remind and Class Dojo. We continue to use those for classroom announcements or for private one-on-one -on -one messages. We are also offering office hours. Our district has organized it in a way that we have 30 minutes to 90 minutes sessions per week via WebEx. And during the office hours, the families, it could be a student or a parent, they might have questions about the activities and we, this is a way to help them one-on-one. -on -one. We also, part of our SEAL training and our SEAL program, uh, have gallery walks which are culminating activities that we hold at the end of each thematic unit that allow students to share what they have learned with their families and teachers. So in this place, the, the students are the teachers and students are sharing their knowledge and vocabulary that they've developed through the duration of the thematic unit. Now with the distance learning, we're sharing the students' work through photos and videos and we share them with the families via Google Classroom or the live meetings that we have in WebEx. Here we have three examples of how we're sharing students' work. So the first one is a video, but we have a picture in there. When we share the slides with everyone, you will have access to the video. So the picture of this is a student during the live meeting in WebEx. And Maestra Santana is asking to all of our students to show her or share with her of something from home that reminds them of the moon. And this student chose a light bulb from his home because it illuminates, just like the moon illuminates at night. And then the last two examples that you see on the bottom, these are from a program called CISO. It's a free app that it helps to create interactive activities designed by teachers. So I could design the activities according to what I'm teaching. And it offers three different ways for responding. And this is my favorite part because the students can 
say the response tracing them with fingers, typing in with the keyboard, or recording their voices. If the fine models is not a strength skill, so then they could just record their voice and say their answer. The best part of CISO is that teachers can hear the students reading. I know that now with the distance learning, teaching has been a little bit more quiet, so I love when I can hear my students reading or explaining the responses, and that it also offers new ways to create art. I love teaching art, and that was one of the hardest parts for me. How, how can I do art from a distance learning program where in a way that all students have access to the same art tools? So CISO offers this. If you click in the slide that we're going to show later, in the picture of that it says Arte with the astronaut, you will see a video of all the pictures that the students created for this unit. Next. And then finally, we want to recommend some resources, the, the ones that we have been using the most. Uh, Screencastify is a free app that you could use to record your files or anything that you have on your screen and make it into a video. CISO is the app that I was uh, recommending earlier that it offers interactive activities that you could create. Epic Books, I don't know if you know about this one, this is awesome. It offers thousands of books free for free and they're both in English and in Spanish. You could assign them to your students and also you could see which books is, each of your students is reading and how long it takes them to read. And then finally, uh, Google Classroom, which I think most of us are familiar with, where you can find everything at one place, or where other specialists like ELD specialists or the librarians can share also their materials there. Uh, all of these pictures have embedded links, so if you want to have access to them, you just click on them. Next. And then finally, Thank you so much for this opportunity to share our learning experiences. This is new for all of us. This is hard. It's been hard for the students, for the families, for us as teachers, we know it. But we are teachers. We are lifelong learners and we can do this. In spite of the circumstances, we are still finding joy, seeing and hearing our students' progress and the students are engaged. They're chanting, they're sharing, and they're finding joy in learning from. So we can do this. Si se puede. Gracias. 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 And so now, um, Kathy Contreras, Dr. Kathy Contreras, will um, share her screen. Yeah. There you go, Kathy. Great. Hello and welcome to Chispa. I first designed this website a few years ago to inspire, to provide news, to provide resources for my colegas mm -hmm. on dual language education. Because of the pandemics, teachers and educators and families need online resources. So like any good teacher, I'm able to be flexible. And so I've modified the CHISPA site to include online resources. So let's take a look and scroll down here. So there's a variety of resources and I'm gonna show you some that are very structured, some that are tool-based, some that are inspirational. So um, first I wanted to show you the West Ed site. As you know, West Ed has always provided significant research and resources. So I wanted to start off with this. It's not a tool, um, it provides the structure. You know, what really is the rationale for providing quality, not just quality, but accessible resources, online resources for our teachers and for our families. So these are the four structural elements that we should be thinking of. Once we go to an online site, what is it exactly? How do we want to support English learners? So West did, a, did an incredible job, and these are the four elements, that we should be boosting synchronous learning times, so live instructions. So Maestra Liz and La Maestra Lucero, uh, 
um, has done, have done that and the other teachers as well. We sh should also be offering structures for providing student collaboration because that's what it's all about. If that's what we did in the classroom, that's what online instruction can look like. So besides basic offering the structures, also provide opportunities to, to have our students talk. That's what we did in the classroom. That's what we should be doing online. And then of course, in our classrooms, we incorporate in reading and writing. Same thing for uh, online instructions. So I invite you to look at the West Ed side because this provides the structure that uh, dual language uh, educators should be uh, providing. Okay, and then yesterday, um, of course, California is together, you know, the premier uh, organization for uh, advocating, adv advocating for English language learners. So yesterday they rolled out this, and it's a resource hub for all the excellent work that they have been providing as far as the English language roadmap for both elementary teachers, high school teachers, middle school teachers, for uh, early childhood education, um, uh, a simple video. So I invite you to look at what Californians together have done for um, English language roadmap and for county offices as well. Okay, let's get into the real nitty gritty of this. So Houston, Texas has done an excellent job in uh, providing resources for their educators. So let's take a look at this and see how they have organized it. So just scroll down here. And these are um, uh, both English and Spanish. So let's look at this, let's see. Um, okay, we'll look at pre-K. Or no, let's look at second grade. So for this week, May 11th through the 22nd, they've divided their lessons, of course, into the core areas. So for second grade, I just love the way they have organized this. It's teacher friendly, it's colorful, it, they use bold text, they give this uh, time sequence. So for one week, this is what they have been providing on Monday. And then resources outside the school district, including their library. So that's for literacy. Let's look at math. So again, for grade second, second grade, uh, according to the day of the year, a day of the week, uh, teachers are asked to provide modeling using things that, have, that students can find in the home by their week and so on. So they have science and social studies. So I invite you to look at this site by Houston Unified School District, extremely organized by weekly, daily activities in both Spanish and English. Here's another helpful tool. So um, this is on the Google Drive. <clears throat> so you look by grade level. So let's look, let's say at fifth grade level. This is useful for um, school districts and county offices to look at the schedule of learning. Let's see, that's not loading, so I'll come back to that. I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, let's look here. <clears throat> As you know, uh, Utah, the state of Utah is extremely, um, they advocate for dual language for many different reasons, but because of the high number of Mormons in Utah, dual language schools are an asset for them because they want their students to go out to the world and experience these, experience these different language and cultural groups. So Utah has provided uh, dual language resources for their dual language classrooms, which include at least 12 different languages. So it's not just Spanish, but it includes Asian language, Mediterranean languages, and so forth. So if you wanna go outside the state and see something that's very structured as far as providing dual language instruction for English speaking kids, there it is. Okay, here's something else that you know just looks overwhelming. But if you scroll, if you, let's see, let me look here. Oh yeah, so for this site, just scroll down and it provides different resources for school districts. It's more of a structural, um, 
tool for districts to use, but it, teachers can go on it and look at sites that they can find useful for their classroom. This is one of my favorite ones because just the title alone, because that's what all the teachers who have just talked about in their classrooms, they have reimagined their teaching. And that's why I really congratulate teachers for doing that. They want to provide the same instruction, the same care, the same skills for their students. So that's what they've done. They have reimagined their teaching. So it gives them tools. So let's scroll down a little bit. One of the teachers, was it Lucero or was it Liz, was talking about Epic. So that's what this site does. It gives you, scroll down a little bit here. So here's Epic that one of the teachers just described. What's so fascinating about this subject is it provides uh, categorization for each tool. Is it printable? Because Lucero had just mentioned that they feel that print and they provide other districts that well provided packets that are printable. Does it need a teacher or an adult? What languages are available? What ELP proficiency levels? And then here it is, Epic in Spanish. And so that provides a whole library of tags and videos and quizzes. Highly recommend this site. So that's what this site does. It provides a resource and it provides the categories. So definitely um, use this site as well. So that's the magic of this Chispa site. It's just one website, but it provides resources. So here again, many of you have used Common Lit and they have Spanish text available for students who are first grade through eighth grade. Uh, this is from our neighboring country, Mexico, from La Secretaría de Educación Pública, and they have provided their textbooks free in all areas of language, science, math, incredible resource for teachers. This takes time to explore, but if you want to see authentic Spanish language resources from our neighbor country, Mexico, here it is for free. And then I included um, this, because what about the affective? You know, we've been talking about linguistic. We certainly, that's our mission as educators. But what about the affective domain? How are our students coping? Are they stressful? Are they excited to see their teachers? I mean, who wouldn't be excited with the teachers who just presented? But students also need a little moment of calmness. And Mind, Mind Yeti provides resources in Spanish and in English, a digital resource for meditation, for quiet, for calm. So don't we all need that in our daily lives? So I invite you to explore this, Mind Yeti. And then I think I'll share just one, one or two more sites. Project-based learning. Remember a couple years ago, project-based learning was just coming in and a lot of teachers used it. So now project-based learning is now shifted to at-home learning. So let's, let's bring back project-based learning. And this site here provides just that in English and in Espanol. Uh, one last site here, let's look at online videos for learning in English. Um, this is more for middle and high schools, but let's not leave them out of the picture. You know, our education is uh, pre-K through college, but these provide uh, wonderful resources for middle school and high school as far as learning English. Uh, where is Larry Ferlasso? Of course, brain pop. Um, so that provides, I hope it provides you a one-stop resource, both for district level personnel, for bilingual educators in the classroom, and for families. So I invite you to look at this site, uh, Chispa, and you'll be provided the website. And then um, Martha also introduced me as um, a children's author. 
So I invite you to look at some of my books because I think they would be a really great resource uh, for teachers. Uh, from preschool, I have Pan Dulce in Spanish available at the teacher's store. And wouldn't that be a fun book to use at home? And the parents are going to the panaderia and they can share that experience. Um, harvesting friends, why not do gardening at home? Let's plant a salsa garden. Let's plant some cilantro cebolla. So I invite you to look at my fun book, Cosechando Amigos. A lot of teachers find braids trencitas as a fun resource and it features the game Loteria so that families can be engaged. And then lastly for fourth and fifth graders is Sweet Memories about a grandfather who's losing his memory but still has precious things to share. Thank you so much. So at this time, let's give our presenters a hearty round of applause. Um, both uh, the Azusa and Davis Joint Unified teams are just leading the way and providing powerful distance dual language learning during COVID-19 school closure. So thank you for sharing. A special thank you to Dr. Contreras for um, sharing dual language resources for the field. And so at this time, um, we are going to be going out into the um, Zoom video breakouts. And so um, I have the first one is um, Anna. Hi. Yes, Anna. Okay, so we are part of the group six and um, some of the promising practices that we discussed were with uh, virtual learning is some of the kids are still really shy about it. So to develop that language, we're using a lot of chants and um, songs and just making sure that everybody's voice is heard. Um, using student uh, teachers to create create videos and content during collaboration meetings um, uh, collaborating weekly with your uh, grade level um, doing breakout rooms with small kids or just doing classes on different days with a smaller group of kids uh, teachers who are some of those teachers are really tech savvy and are making their own content reading their same uh, making read alouds um, and zooming in with parents to making sure that they understand that, you know, they're, they're stakeholders in this uh, virtual learning and um, using thematic instruction, des our designated ELD times for five days a week for 30 minutes within, um, uh, with, within the levels and uh, sharing uh, during our small reading groups the same way you would do with a, in a table a round table with your group you would do like small groups with leveled readers so you're all sharing the same screen and you're reading together so those are some of the things that we practices that we talked about in our group thank you very much um anna christine warbley hi there so I was in, I believe, room one or group one, and um, some of the ideas we talked about were um, one of the ones we heard earlier today from the presenter about um, just all of the uh, opportunities you're afforded when you incorporate chants into your lessons with language, listening, um, cognates, and things like that. And we had also talked about um, uh, clapping out um, syllables is one of the games a teacher was doing. So the, getting the kids engaged and not just sitting, you know, passively during live instruction. And then the um, question we had was, um, you know, what should the focus of instruction be as we begin next year? Um, we talked about, you know, we were kind of, I, I don't want to say lucky, but lucky in the sense of that we this um you know had happened towards the end of the year when we had routines and procedures and things in place like that so what might be um or what are some ideas of uh, of the focus of instruction be as we begin thinking about next year okay thank you mm -hmm. we'll um share another gabby bell Yes, I was in group 14 and I was very fortunate to have a 
great conversation with Laura Orozco and um, Carla Herrera. We were talking particularly about uh, promising practices and concentrated most of our time in thinking about access to technology for families. Um, and Laura shared how in her district, um, one of the things that were very effective was surveying families, finding out which families had access to technology and quickly adjusting and understanding that sometimes having one Chromebook per family was not enough, um, that they needed to adjust thinking of a ratio. So they settled on about one Chromebook for every three children or school children per family. Um, and I also shared how that was also an equity strategy that we were using in my own district, um, thinking not only access to the Chromebooks, but also to hotspots. So families have access to virtual learning opportunities. Thank you. Alicia Ragosa. Um, hello, so I was in group 13 and we spoke a lot about promising practices. And so we just wanted to share that one of our promising practices um, was uh, to provide for students that do not have access to technology some kind of a menu for ELD or SLD with activities that um, are centered around the four domains, um, listening, speaking, reading, or writing, um, that also have uh, sentence frames to scaffold their discussion on the activity that they select. Um, and then someone else in our group said that what works really well for them was to have a choice of activities. So they would provide several choices for activities for the kids to practice their language and they would select their favorite activities, but then also be encouraged to try some of the activities they're uh, maybe less likely to try. Um, so we spoke about that. we talked a little bit about um, benchmark resources, Maravillas, and how they have a lot of online digital resources for our Spanish speakers that are accessible. Um, for them to utilize with their teachers. And so those were some of the promising practices we spoke about and we ran out of time to come up with questions. Okay, thank you, Alicia. Mm -hmm. At this time, I'm gonna ask everyone to please um, add their promising practice and their question in the chat. And at this time, we're gonna go back and um, um, look at some of the questions that were asked of our presenters. And I think it really is um, the same question for both groups. So starting with Azusa, um, there's questions about, you know, how many hours of um, teaching, I guess, um, is provided for each student in a day and in a week. And how do you um, divide instruction in terms of of um, language allocation, you know, what is the percentage um, of, you know, in terms of the program and in terms of the level of proficiency of the students. So Azusa, I'll have Norma and her team, if they could um, um, provide some um, answers to that question. So. Okay, I can, I can um, add to that. So, we, um, Azusa has a learning block, making sure that there's a learning block for each grade so that when, if there's one device, um, the first grade student has their time and then the, the other grade level student can utilize the device. Um, so uh, in our learning block, we do have um, a three hour, two days a week, three hour time allocated. How we decided to divide that up, especially with the little ones, with the attention span, they've left that up to the teacher. Um, and then Wednesdays are supposed to be like our conference days where we can um, work with individual students um, based, on, based on their needs. So the way my partner and I have um, allocated time, um, Tuesday and Tuesdays and, and Fridays, we meet with the students in a whole group setting. Uh, again, that's where we practice our oral language with chants and so forth. We proceed to math, utilizing what's on the, the, the distance learning plan because that's what parents are supporting at home. Um, and then we have small group instruction. I presently have four groups and I do an additional half hour. So I do go over my time a little bit um, uh, within those three hours. Um, so that, and then on Wednesday, we do a full hour of, then we break that up and we do our ELD focusing on the language, um, the ELD standards, and what's presented in the plan. Um, I've had a really good uh, attendance. I average, I have 22 students and I average about 19 a session and they all return to the second session. Um, the students that um, are not attending, it's, it's just 
other issues kind of going at home, but I'm connecting with them, uh, you know, weekly by phone call, by email. Um, and our, our sessions are on Tuesdays and Fridays are in Spanish. And then we do a little, a little part of it in English, but, and then our Wednesday, the full hour is in English. So she's the English model for my class. I'm the, um, and I'm the English model for her class. Okay, so um, a representative from Montgomery, the same question. In terms of language allocation, in terms of instruction, how do you divide um, instruction between the two languages? And how much time do you spend with each student? So for our district, uh, this is what we have for each grade level, and it tells us the amount of minutes that we have of direct instruction, which could be videos that the teachers make or links or activities that we post in Google Classroom. And then work is independent work that they do at home, usually it's with the paper packets that they get in the mail. So I could only speak for first grade, <laughs> my level. So because our families, they have so many different schedules, some families are still working and going outside. I have families who work on the fields or work in supermarkets. So they are still going outside to work. Other families are working from home. So it's really hard to find one time that we could see every day our students. So we decided to meet with our uh, students on Fridays. We started um, as a whole group, but it was difficult balancing all the technical difficulties, plus having the whole group for some students, they will feel really shy. So during our collaboration time, the first grade teachers agree to, on Fridays, meet in small groups. So we split our class in three groups and we work like for my class is seven students per group. And now I see that the shy students who didn't want to participate before, they want to participate in a small group and everyone has a turn and time to speak and share. Uh, so this is for first grade. And like I said, we only meet once a week for 30 to 40 minutes in small groups. And we also have the office hours. So we were given the choice for the teachers to choose between 30 minutes to 90 minutes. I do two sessions per week, one in the morning, one in the afternoon to offer parents uh, choices and during office hours I just wait for parents or students to show up and answer any questions that they might have. They might have questions about activity, how do you do this, or they might have a question about uh, content or if the parent doesn't um, understand Spanish that much, so they might have another question related to um, the content or the language. So I Thank think that's you. all. Thank Thank you very much. And so um, at this time, um, I just want, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, we would like you to do. Um, I just want to remind everyone that next week um, that we have an Asian language, you know, for biliteracy programs, um, K5, K6. On May 26th, uh, we will focus on immigrant and refugee students. And on June 2nd, it's, uh, we will uh, be um, focusing on DLAC and ELAC. And again, um, we will announce um, other sessions shortly. And um, we would like you, if you have not, to please complete the survey. Uh, the more responses a word gets, the bigger it becomes. So you can see the very common answers that are highlighted. Um, this is using a website, mentimeter.com, it's free. Uh, it's a nice way to get a word cloud if you're trying to uh, get some visuals of, of uh, some common responses. And we can see support, equity, access, engagement are very, uh, very big. And I, I think that our presenters really exemplified um, these words in terms of their focus on equity, access, and engagement. And I want to thank them again for translating those high leverage strategies into online and offline distance learning. So um, thank you again. And um, so we will make sure that we get everybody um, the um, comments in the chat room and a copy of this uh, word cloud in terms of our wishes for our dual language learners um, and our emergent um, 
our emergent bilingual students. So we have a survey, the survey link, you can see uh, the bit.ly link on this page. Um, and uh, we would really appreciate um, you uh, completing that survey. We wanna thank you. And for more information, please go to our website or contact Erica at californianstogether.org. And um, I just have to say, um, you know, as we dance off another Zoom, um, muchísimas gracias to everyone.